You just heard me talk about some of the smaller independent refiners in the United States. Obviously, Exxon, Chevron, they do refining as well. Are there any names either in the U.S. or globally that stand out even more to you right now? Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. So I think this this global refining uh, rally, it, it, as I said, it's really a global phenomenon. You see it across regions. Um, Exxon is is highly uh, exposed to this. It's it's the biggest refiner of the of the super majors, four and a half million barrels a day of, of refining capacity, and they will definitely benefit. And BP will also benefit, as will Shell and Total. To a lesser extent, Chevron. They tend to have been more upstream weighted, but. Um, a number of these companies will benefit and they'll drive earnings upgrades. Yeah, I don't want to get into politics barrage, and I, I know kind of what's happening here. Here, there's this big debate about the oil companies, the idea that as oil prices go up, they automatically just start printing money. And we know that earnings are well up from 2020 and 2021 because those are miserable years, oil briefly going negative. But can you clear it up for us just generally when the price of oil goes up? Does that necessarily fall to the bottom line of many of the biggest names? Or do they, because a lot of them have to buy it as well, do their margins stay relatively similar? Tell us how it works. So if you think about the, the upstream, um, some of your costs will be also linked to commodities, which are going up. So you'll see some offset there. And obviously, you'll have a, a higher tax bill to pay usually. Um, so some of it will flow to the bottom line. If you think about the downstream and the fining, oil is actually an input. And that's one of the somewhat surprising things of what we're seeing now is refining margins are going up despite the oil prices are, are going up. And that's just telling you that the market's extremely tight. It's incentivizing refiners to run as hard as possible. Um, and despite the oil price increase, your margins are still going up. Yeah, we know that you recently upgraded Exxon. I mean, we, we forget. I know it's early 2022, but back yeah, 18 months, 24 months ago, Exxon was talking about cutting its dividend. It was talking about major cost cuts, capital spending. It collapsed. Everybody was talking about sort of the end of oil. I mean, that was less than two years ago. You've recently upgraded Exxon Mobil. How surprised are you or how surprised should we be about this change in what has happened for these big oil companies? Yeah, a lot has happened in the last uh, two years. I also shouldn't forget that there's, a, there's an ongoing war uh, with Russia and Ukraine. So that's obviously stoked the geopolitical uh, fire and, and raised commodity prices as well. Um, but when you think about Exxon, they've really stuck to the plan. And that plan actually took them to the, the brink of a dividend cut in 2020, I would argue. Um, and then the commodity price rally has helped them in 21. And in 2022, Actually, things changed again. So you have this big rally in refining margins. And the other key thing with Exxon is they've actually invested in the upstream through the downturn in recent years. And they end up with a project like uh, Lisa and Guyana, which has a lot of running room. And it's actually a, an asset which we yep. would argue is a crap and something that other companies don't have. Is there any company besides Exxon you like, Barrage, quickly? So Shell's our top pick among the majors because we remain constructive on the LNG market and it still trades at a discount to many of its global peers.